Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It is super helpful. Today I'm going to be grading and reviewing the five DC Comics superhero games that were released for the NES. Yeah, there were just five. No Flash game, no Green Lantern, no Justice League, no Lobo. Just three Batman titles, a Superman game, and a Swamp Thing game. But very briefly before I get to that, if you guys want to help support the channel and just my writing career and all that good stuff, you can become a patron to my Patreon page. Super easy. I've got a link in the description and you get tons of extra content, including... So I'm working on a book right now that I haven't announced yet. My patrons have read five chapters from this book that I haven't even announced yet. Plus you get a lot of other stuff. And you can also order signed books direct for me. I've written a lot of video game books, as many of you know, and if you want to order signed copies, I've got a link in the description as well, or you can just go to brettweisswords.com. All right, let's get to it. First up is Batman the Video Game. Now, this game is very nostalgic to me. When the 1989 Tim Burton film came out, which this game is ba loosely based on, Wow, I was excited. You know, just a big Batman fan uh, from the time I was very young, watching the Adam West Batman show and the cartoons and Super Friends and all that. And I was so excited that they were finally taking Batman serious in a filmed adaptation. You know, uh, the Batman comics had been serious for a very long time, but he just wasn't taken so seriously. You know, just superheroes in general in the 80s were just sort of looked down upon, unlike today, where geek is chic and geeky culture is in and all that stuff and there's all this great Marvel and DC stuff and movies and cartoons and TV shows and everything. Well, in the 80s, it was a different story. So I was really excited when the Batman movie was coming out and it was gonna be serious and relatively dark and all of that. And the game, I was just about as excited for that and my excitement, it turned out to be very valid because it is a fantastic game. It takes place over five stages, Gotham City, Axis Chemical Factory, and on and on, and it evokes the look of the film, kind of dark and uh, kind of a little bit mysterious look to it. And as Batman, you can punch and you can use three bat weapons, and of course the batarangs, a spear gun. There are three kinds of jumps. Uh, you dodge homing mines, bomb dropping claws, you battle bosses like KGB Beast, Deadshot, and of course the Joker, who is very hard to beat. There's really good music. It's not like the Danny Elfman score, but it is, you know, solid music, great looking game. It doesn't follow the film exactly, uh, of course, but it, it, you know, evokes the, just sort of the spirit of the movie, and it's just a fantastic game. It's a good beat em up, it's a good platformer, it's a lot of fun. I give it a good solid. A minus. Love this game, Batman the video game. Not only is it nostalgic, it's still fun to play today. Next up is Batman Return of the Joker. Now this is a beautiful, gorgeously uh, illustrated game for the NES. Wow, one of the best looking games for the system. And you don't hear about this game as much as you do Batman. It's just not as common. I used to rent this game a lot back in the day. And uh, as Batman, you can shoot, you don a jetpack, you have projectile weapons, such as a crossbow, of course, batarangs. You have a shield star and a sonic neutralizer. You go through seven levels, including Gotham City Cathedral, Joker's Warehouse, and Snow Mountain. So there are a variety of environments. It's a fun game that scrolls vertically and horizontally. It is a difficult game. You can crouch, you dodge fire and spikes, you jump on moving platforms. It's a, it, there's side-scrolling shooter se sequences. It is a fun game, but wow, it's difficult. Rich colors, detailed backgrounds, large sprites. It's a great looking game. It almost looks Genesis quality or something like that, or Super Nintendo quality. Not quite, but it's definitely one of the better looking NES games. But holy cow, it is difficult. I give it a good solid B plus because it's fun to play. It looks great, but it can be a bit frustrating. Next up is Batman Returns, based on the 1992 movie. Now, I didn't like this film as much as the original Batman, but I did enjoy it a great deal. I loved Catwoman in it, and it had a Christmas theme, which is pretty interesting for a superhero movie. I did not like the Penguin in the movie, who was just gross and disgusting. Not, not a big fan of that character in that film, but I did enjoy the movie to a degree. 
Now, there's a much better version of Batman Returns on the Super Nintendo, but talking about the NES version today, it's sort of a, unlike Batman or Batman Return of the Joker, this is a pure beat-em-up along the lines of Double Dragon, Streets of Rage, where you can move, you know, have more movement around the screen, but it's more redundant than those games. You can punch, you can slide kick, jump kicking seems to work the best. You go through six stages, including Gotham Plaza, Shrek's Department Store, and Arctic World. So again, there is some, you know, a uh, variety of levels in this game. You can punch and kick clowns, sword swallowers, stilt walkers, strongmen, motorcycle riders. There's a lot to do in this game. You can throw batarangs, you've got a grappling hook. Again, the sprites are large. And of course, you battle Catwoman and Penguin. Nice graphics that evoke the film. Drive the Batmobile and the Bat Ski Boat. These are side-scrolling shooter levels. And again, it is difficult, just like uh, Batman Return of the Joker. It's a tough game. Uh, when you begin the game, your health meter is barely half full when you start. That seems crazy to me. A game that's already challenging uh, starts off difficult just because your health meter is not full. That's kind of crazy. But like I mentioned before, it's a Christmas game, which is pretty unusual. At least has some Christmas elements in it. And I noticed Angry Video Game Nerd did a recent video where he talks about, is Batman Returns a Christmas movie? Well, you could also say, is this a Christmas game? And I could say, partly so. And I give Batman Returns a B minus. <sighs> Some would might give it a C plus, and I, I consider that, but I think it's 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 playable. It's pretty fun to a degree, so I'd give it a B minus at least. So there you go. Batman Returns again. The Super Nintendo version is much better, but the, the NES one is playable. Next up is Superman. This is a dreadful game for the NES. Really disappointing, and it's so often game companies just do a miserable job of bringing Superman to playable life. So disappointing. So often and Superman for the NES. I hate this game, I just, just to be honest with you. You fight crime in Metropolis, you can fly, you can jump, you can punch robots, racketeers, fire beasts, zombies, and other enemies. You battle Lex Luthor, Ursa, Nan, General Zod. Um, you start off as Clark Kent, who can punch and jump strangely high, and you can enter a phone booth if your meter is high enough and turn into Superman. Some of you younger viewers, what is a phone booth? <laughs> Okay, maybe not. You can ride the subway, you talk to people to get clues. This is a non-linear adventure game, which I guess you can give the company credit for trying something a little different or try to do something creative with Superman, but not much credit because it's a lousy game. You can use x-ray vision to see enemies hiding behind buildings, and you could, but as Superman, you can only fly sometimes, and the flying sequences are boring, poorly utilized, and the jumping is floaty. You can have a super spin move. So there are a variety of Superman's powers used. You can super spin underground. You can shoot heat vision at enemies, but it, it's just all clunky and kind of boring. And uh, they're short, squatty characters, poor animation. And when, you, when Superman punches, it doesn't even look like he makes contact with the enemies, but the enemies, you know, get punched anyway. It's just, it's just really strange. I far prefer Death and Return of Superman on the Super Nintendo, which is a beat-em-up, far superior. It's more simplistic than this game, but it's so much more fun and looks so much better. And is it, in this game, it just looks goofy and cartoonish like a kid's game, but it's too, probably too complex for younger kids. I'm gonna give this one a D. Now, I wanted to give it a D minus, but I know it has its fans, so I'll bump it up a half grade just for people that do like this game, but I personally cannot stand it. I'm giving it a D. Yikes, disappointing. What can I say? Superman is just, I mean, remember Superman on the Nintendo 64 where you fly through rings? This game is almost that bad. All right, fifth. And last is Swamp Thing. Just going in alphabetical order here. Another disappointment. It's based on the short-lived animated series from 1991, as opposed to maybe the comic books by Alan Moore or Bernie Wrightson and Lynn Wein, something like that. You know, it is based on the DC Comics hero Swamp Thing, but it did have a cartoon series that maybe a lot of you haven't seen. As Swamp Thing, you're battling a variety of foes. Your arch foe, Arcane, and his underhanded unmen. You're battling bosses, Weed Killer, Skin Man, and Dr. Demo. Sounds okay, right? Unfortunately, the game 
contains none of the sophistication and horror of the comic books and none of the just sort of goofy fun of the cartoon. It's just not that great of a game. You trudge through eight dark, dreary levels, mundane platforming action. You can punch, jump over, and throw moss balls at robots, snakes, skeletons, and other enemies. And you can transform into items like a tree, an apple, a tire, a flower. But he can't punch and crouch simultaneously. And the Swamp Thing and the comics was so powerful, so imposing, so mysterious, and said so, so many interesting powers, and was just so super strong. You just don't get that feeling here. The sound effects are reused from Bart versus the Space Mutants, and the music is repetitious. It's just not that good of a game. I'm sorry, I wish it were. Uh, these superheroes have so much potential, like Superman, like Swamp Thing, and they're just, seems like more often than not, they're just not utilized to their full potential. And that is certainly the case with Swamp Thing for the NES. That is a bummer. So I'm afraid Swamp Thing gets a disappointing D. Now, it, you can play it. I guess if you only had five or six games in your NES library and you were a kid with no money or something and you were just desperate for something to play, yeah, you'd probably spend some time with it, but it's just not very good, unfortunately. So yeah, D for Swamp Thing. Let me know in the comments of these five games, which is your favorite. And uh, you can also let me know in the comments, what is your favorite superhero game of all time for any console? Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for liking this video. And again, in the description of this video, you can check out my Patreon page, Facebook, um, Instagram, and all the different you know social media and all that. You can get their links to my books for sale and all that good stuff, so check it out. We will talk to you guys in another video. I really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.